You're supposed to worship the living God. Who is the living God? The Holy Ghost is the living God. Now, I've been preaching for the last four messages on why we worship the Holy Ghost. Because there's a lot of contention and a lot of confusion out there. Oh, you shouldn't worship the Holy Ghost. You don't know who the Holy Ghost is then. Because if you knew the Holy Ghost was God, or if you knew Him as God, then you would worship Him. Isn't this true? That's right. What I say today needs to be solidly understood by the Holy Ghost worshiper. This needs to be unshakable and a foundation. Can't be shaken off of it, because everybody will try to shake you off of it with their religious doctrine. Right until they actually look at their religious doctrine and it says you should worship the Holy Ghost first Timothy chapter 6 charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust say trust trust, trust. what's another word for trust have faith right. or have belief you know if you were to say our faith what would you be talking about you could be talking about your religion somebody said oh what faith are you you go oh I'm a uh, frankly I don't know <laughs> But you would say you would describe your faith trust not in uncertain riches but trust in faith in believe in the living god so wouldn't it be good to know who the living god is so that your faith could be in him it said trust or have faith in him believe in him him who him the living god that's who our faith should be in does this make sense did you get that out of that verse of scripture well not really okay go back to chapter 4 first Timothy chapter 4 verse 9 this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation you think so is that true now let's read uh, verse 10 for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the Living God our religion is in the Living God our faith is in the living God our belief system is in the living God and therefore he's saying that you suffer you labor and suffer reproach because of it are you here yes. am I making this up no. I'm just reading it because I mean I'm reading it loud and sort of yelling because we trust in the living say the living God, the living God. who is the Savior of all men especially those that believe these things command and teach so don't yell at me if I'm commanding and teaching these things right. who did it say is the Savior of all men especially those who believe the living, the living God we have faith we trust our religion is in the Living God who is the Savior of all men now if you look at this word it really means the one saving the Living God is the one saving all men and if you go back and listen to some of the other messages I pointed out that the Holy Ghost is the one in the earth today doing the saving yeah. if it's done in the earth it's done by the Holy Ghost who's the one saving the Holy, the Holy Ghost the Living God this verse of Scripture just says it most people would read that verse and they go when they see the Savior they go what that's Jesus their their religion immediately flips that switch and then they don't see what the verse actually said because Jesus isn't doing it Jesus is at the right hand of the Father you understand who is it the Living God so if he's the one saving that's literally what it means the Living God is the one saving all men especially those that believe does it matter who the Living God is yeah. would it help to know who the Living God is yeah. who does the Bible say specifically say specifically who does the Bible say specifically is the Living God the Holy Ghost. because if we can cross this bridge we've got something if we can sit the Bible concretely without being shaken you can't be shaken from it is the Living God who is the Savior of all men we need to find out who the Living God is so let's see who the Bible specifically calls the Living God go to 2nd Corinthians so we're supposed to trust in the Living God and he is the Savior of all men our faith is supposed to be in the Living God is this is this too difficult 
second corinthians chapter 6 verse 16 and, and i'm telling you as these as you meditate upon these things these scriptures you should know right where they are you should know what they are so that you can't be shaken from your faith that's in the living god your faith thank you your trust your belief system and is in the living god who richly provides you with all things for your enjoyment and he's the savior of those who believe wouldn't it be good to know who he is let's see who the bible specifically calls the living god what and what agreement has the temple of god with idols for you are the temple of the living god who's the bible specifically say is the temple of the living god yes. you me we we're the temple of the living god. does it say that you're the temple of the living God as God has said I will dwell in them and walk in them I will be their God they will be my people well he says he's the temp we're the temple of the living God now go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 so who's the temple of the living God specifically you look at verse 19 what know you not that your body is the temple over the other verse it said your body is the temple of the living God here it says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost who does the Bible specifically say the living God is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. concretely you can build a foundation on it this is the written Word of God the Holy Ghost is the Living God the Living God is the Holy Ghost yes. That's right. it's another one of his names if you say Living God I worship you who are you worshiping the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost which you should do because you're a temple of the Holy Ghost and that's what temples should do they're for worship you understand that what know that you're not your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which you have of God you are not your own you are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's what God are you glorifying Holy Ghost the Living God are you getting this mm -hmm. what God are you glorifying in your body the Living God who is the Living God the Holy Ghost are you seeing this all right go to chapter 3 1 Corinthians 3 16 know you not that your you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you what's another name for the Holy Ghost the Spirit of God the Living God the Bible specifically and concretely refers to the Holy Ghost as the Living God now that should be settled isn't that true who's the Living God Holy Ghost it should just come up you know you think about people that you know learn a different language well at first you kind of have to replace it a word and you learn a new word right but you're really still thinking in English but you're saying the you know Swahili word or whatever it is you learn but then eventually you start thinking that's when you know you've got the language you start thinking in the other the other language yeah. it's the same thing when I say Holy Ghost you could be thinking Living God when somebody says living God you can think Holy Ghost are you getting this yes. now if I say I worship the Holy Ghost yes I know most people won't like it and they'll want to kick me out of their church or they'll shut off their thing you understand oh I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost what if I say I worship you living God guess what most people wouldn't have a problem with that because they don't know they're not making the connection but when I say I worship you living God I'm saying I worship you Holy Ghost do you understand mm -hmm. is that better is that better for most people they're okay with that you know that most people would be okay with it. Oh, what do you what do you guys do over there that's, oh we worship the Living God oh that's good good Living God living Living God he's good that sounds good he's the Holy Ghost and they go oh but the Holy Ghost is his actual name that's that's who he is you understand all right so when I say I worship you Holy Ghost or I say I worship you living God I'm saying the same thing so you're not as weird as people would like to say you are you just worship the you just know who God is <coughs> Jesus said we know who we worship yes. 
remember that in John chapter 4 we know who well we know who we worship we know who the Living God is he's the Holy Ghost and we worship him and when I say I worship you Holy Ghost I'm worshiping the Living God I hope I'm getting this across that's John chapter 4 verse 24 it says we know who we worship and he goes on to say God is a spirit and they that worship him worship him in spirit and truth worship who worship the Holy Ghost the Spirit the Living God really you worship the Holy Ghost yes because I worship the Living God I know who I'm worshiping he's a spirit he is God in the earth today are you getting this yeah. these things need to be unshakable why because the world wants to shake you out of them and they don't understand it that's why I say isn't it better you go oh well we worship the Living God but then you have to jump through those hoops to explain who it is he's the one Jesus sent let's take this a little bit further say I worship the Living God, I worship the living God. there's nothing wrong with that is there no. you should worship the Living God you worship the Living God he's God he's in the earth his name is the Holy Ghost go to Hebrews Hebrews chapter 9 let's look at verse 14 how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve who the Living God who are you supposed to serve you believe on the blood of Jesus it cleanses your conscience so that you can serve the Living God who's the Living God the Holy, Ghost. Holy Ghost unshakable without a doubt Holy Ghost is the Living God we're supposed to serve the Holy Ghost say serve. serve now this word serve whether you like it or not is translated worship many other times in the same King James Bible the same Greek word rather than serve is translated worship in the context of those verses so look at this it says how much more so the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to worship the living God who do we worship the Living God who is the Living God the Holy Ghost who do we worship the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. same word I'll take you to a couple other verses of Scripture so you can see it where that exact same Greek word is translated worship instead of serve and the fact is you know the word serve there just means you're actively doing it you're actively worshiping God how do you actively worship God you open your mouth and you go I worship you Holy Ghost now by, by the way those words right there I worship you Holy Ghost are not found in almost all of Christianity why well there's a lot of reasons why but this is the end day and it needs to come to the forefront we're supposed to be purged from dead works what are dead works works that are dead brother yeah they don't do anything they're dead to serve the Living God which would be a live work a living work are you here yeah. the opposite of a dead work is a not dead work in fact it says that well I'll imagine this you worship the Living God what's that effect gonna be on you he's gonna make you alive he's gonna quicken you he's gonna renew your youth he's gonna renew your mind he's gonna make you alive that's what living means the quickening God what about your finances what if they look dead you ever been where your finances look dead or almost dead they're pretty much almost dead what are you gonna do you need God to quicken them yes. say this God, God. Quicken, quicken my finances you're the living God and I ask for your help in Jesus name who are you calling on who'd you exactly you called on the Living God who is he he's the Holy Ghost he's in the earth does he hear a prayer like that of course Living God based out of the word sozo Living God it actually means sozo theos Living God to give life to make alive to quicken you want him to quicken you according to his word that's why you need to know what the word is who wrote the word the Holy Ghost who's the Living God the Holy Ghost see this needs to be solidly in you this is our faith this is our belief system you can see it in the scriptures for yourself you don't even have to listen to me as a radical person. oh he's radical he worships the Holy Ghost 
I like how can you not he is the living God we are called to worship the living God didn't you see that it said we're they're supposed to serve or worship the living God so Hebrews 9 14 says to serve or worship the living God and not dead works go to Hebrews 10 another place where that same word which is translated serve is translated worship uh, Hebrews 10 verse 1 for the law having a shadow of good things to come but not the very image of things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect verse 2 for then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the what worshipers once purged should have no more conscience of sins so who would have no more conscience of sins the worshiper. the worshiper that's the same word translated serve in the other one are you getting this mm -hmm. it says we're supposed to worship the living God or serve the living God here it says worshipers how about one more Acts chapter 24 and let's look at verse 14 but this I confess unto thee that after the way that they call heresy so worship I the God of my fathers he worships God Hebrews 9 14 says we serve the living God is translated worship many times we worship the living God straight out of your Bible are you here yeah. is it okay to worship the living God yeah. you're supposed to worship the living God who is the living God the Holy Ghost is the Living God you're supposed to worship the Living God and frankly because we haven't been it's kind of left us in a lurch so to speak well we need to make up some ground should be a good solid foundation of why you worship the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. Philippians 3 3 for we are the circumcision which worship again it's the same word which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Jesus Christ and have no confidence in the flesh now what's curious here if you look up the Greek I like to look up the Greek because I can sit there and I go this is what it actually says and then then we they try to add words usually in English to make us understand it guess what it literally says we are the circumcision which worship God the Spirit now because they said God in the Spirit we seem to think we're worshiping God in some kind of spiritual way yeah. but it literally says Theos Numa we are of the circumcision which worship Theos Numa which worship God the Spirit mm -hmm. who's God the Spirit the Holy, Ghost. the Holy Ghost is God the Spirit and we worship him are you getting this mm -hmm. is there any benefit in worshiping God the Spirit yes there's more benefit in doing that because you're being right you're being scriptural than to not and because he's the living God he's able to do things for you that he couldn't do to people who won't worship him so when I say I worship you Holy Ghost who am I worshiping God the Spirit, God the Spirit. when I say I worship you Holy Ghost who am I worshiping the, the Holy Ghost and the living God you get this there's no there's no separation there's not one spirit he's the same spirit that's just another name he is the living God and we know who we worship say I know, I know. Who, who I worship, I worship.